Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last states of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Love, and right now, as you can tell, well, we've just already killed off everyone who rebelled in Noble Sibirsk, and basically, we're kind of hanging out, but let's go ahead and integrate all these different areas, but also uh, redefine the uh, Siberian region, oh, yeah, far eastern and central Siberian regions, and begin exerting influence in good old Kazakhstani. So, uh, we can solve this American stuff here. We know he focuses. Very nice. The Vaz marches on. Siberia has finally been unified under the banner of the Vaz Mikhail Mikoski. No more skulking in frozen wastes as lapdogs for the Japanese. No more petty squabblings amongst exiles for who bears the title of Kolchak's heir. While we've had to remove some undesirable elements along the way, it is all for the best of causes. The unity of the motherland. The Russian National Labour Party stands united in the loyalty to the Vaz. Cool. Keeping up appearances. The ideological quagmire. Altering the Siberian bill. Nikolai Petlin was a troublemaker of a sort that could not be tolerated in this cruel world, a reformist full of ideas but with no common sense. Naturally, he had to be eliminated, but that is not to say he must be wiped from memory. Many of his plans had the seed of a good idea within him, one that must be cultivated by more fruit experienced statesmen to bear fruit. A Siberian bill was one of Petlin's better ideas, a new foundation for a great and powerful Russia to be built on. A few alterations to the bill and it will become a powerful statement, both to our own citizens and to observers from across the Pacific. More political power, research speed, ideological drift defense, and less damage to garrison sounds Perfection for us. Oh, look at that manpower! Wow. Are oh, we demobilizing? That oh, sucks. That really sucks. Um, we need to increase our relations with the Americans still again. Uh, yeah, other that, not too bad. And we could probably reunify the motherland. Honestly, at this point, I'd rather just take out Kazakhstan now, so we can get through them quickly. We do have the second West Russian War mod installed, so whenever we can go to war, we will go to war with the Germans and see how far we can push it. Unfortunately, there's no unique content at the time of this recording when we're playing as them, so it's quite unfortunate. But it is what it is. A new winter, new dawn. Mikowski had been here before. In the misty days where Magadan constituted his only territory, his office was cleaner, more vodka expensive, and the stationery both more reliable and better to grip. Yet the old Abin never left him. He looked at the window, seeing petals of snow unfurl and split in the midair. The howling of the winter winds dying against the glass panes. Some flakes stalked, but they slowed down, leaving a trail of clear look behind them. He turned his attention to the list, sheets upon the sheets of names, blotted out in the order of their execution. At the top of the list was his enemy, Nikolai Petlin. The name was crossed out, but in truth, Mikowski did not know where he went. Still, it was preferable to keep his absence in a more permanent state. Nikolai Petlin was dead, and that was all that mattered. Aides came, came and went by his room, carrying a chill with him. Shivering as they handed out reports of the purge to the Vaz. Hey, Mikowski said to a lanky blonde aide. Turn that gramophone on. The roar of music and the howl of the winds masked the gunshots out in the Siberian wilds. A vase never, never work is never complete. But like I always say, if you like to read about these ones, please go right ahead. Um, these are always just pretty much exact same as it was uh, with mostly Russian unifiers. Pretty normal. Nothing too different. Nothing too uh, too crazy there. So uh, let's see. Yeah, we want to work on our armor. Armor could be improved. Just go and invade whenever we can. I just I just want to go straight to invade. Just straight invade. So we'd go to war by seventy one, which these by then these guys should both be killing themselves off. Which is great, great, great. But in the meantime, we'll choose into the Atomic Age and then do State of Dependent State Department of Moral Decency. Ooh, I like that. Immediate universal suffrage. Oh, not bad. Um, so we got that. The State Department of Moral Decency. Ideas are a dangerous thing, and they must be controlled if Russia's not to fall into darkness once again. The Bolsheviks tore up the Russian morals at the root, permitting decadence, destroying the traditional family structure, and even encouraging deviance. The State Department of Moral Decency will ensure that all publications uphold the standards of the Russian people, not to mention including only appropriate political views. It will be an awful shame for anyone to be led astray. And we will also do immediate universal suffrage. Russia must catch up with the nations of the West if it is a hope for their aid. The right to vote is something not seen here since the Novgorod Republic, and only then to nobles. The people will truly be grateful when we grant universal suffrage not only to men but to women as well, and we will certainly be put our name in the papers over in America as a true ally of democracy. If you'd like to be about better industrial expertise, please go right ahead. Cool. And let's get some better artillery. It's only next year, so might as well start doing some of that stuff. Because we could use it. Mm, tanks, jets, artillery. We're looking not bad. I do want to get some heavy SP artillery for, like, tanks and stuff, but we'll see. We're not an industrial juggernaut as much as I would love us to be, so... We'll definitely see. Border collapses in Egypt. Cool. Because these tanks are 20 combat, and even then they're really not that great, so... And I'll do immediate uh, universal suffrage as well. Uh, we really don't have that many tanks. And we've ended up APCs. You know what? Let's go and convert you guys to all APCs. Just get just get going with the armor. Move stuff around a little bit, and then there you go. So that's five. Hmm. Um, actually, can we, can we do this for any no cost? Okay. So five and five. Fine, whatever. 
Uh, so that's going to be like the base template. So we're not quite done yet. Let's get some recon, engineers, give him some more artillery support. There you go. That's a little better. And let's go ahead and do some of this stuff as well. Uh, where is this? Research facilities begin to improve? Oh, yes, please. Oh, I want to do the State Department of Moral Decency next. Whoopsie. Eh, we get better academic base. What is this one? Oh, uh, Peace Preservation Law. Fair elections, huh? Well, it seems like we'll get there eventually. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, we're going to need a massive army, though, to beat up the Germans. So we need to definitely have 40 combat widths, which are down here. Yep, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Even though I would prefer some uh, more heavy SB artillery, but whatever. Academic base, please go right ahead. Nice. State Department of Moral Decency. Followed up with huh, the fair election. Slightly decreased coring time. Slightly more political power. Not bad. Got, but keep spending, keep making, keep producing. 2.16 billion is not great, but whatever. The ideological quagmire. Central Siberia is a mess. Communist warlords, anarchist armies, and mad kings have ruled the region for decades, resulting in a political situation that even can generously be described as insane. In order to return the region to normalcy, we'll send our agents of the state intelligence agency to better determine how the ideological situation of the area has stabilized. Once we know what the people truly believe, we can correct it, or at least isolate them from their ideas that do not truly take hold. Nice. Ah, more divisions. And here we go. We only need some political power to make sure that we can core everything first. A reliable partner is not bad. Conscientious law. Uh, the consciousness of law. Sometimes parents must keep things from their children. Does a the parent then allow the child to run rapid, throwing a tantrum and causing trouble? Of course not. It's for the same reason that we must keep things from our people. And we must not allow them to kick up a fuss about it. The right to speak your mind is not a right, but a precious gift, one that we must only be used, or must only be used, with our blessing. Keeping protesters off the streets is for their own good, and preventing them from saying hurtful things is just good parenting. Status report. A uh, report was thrown Mikowski's desk from the state intelligence agency, spilling out sheets of paper and dossiers filled with printed reports and graphs on its cover read the situation in the West. Gathered intelligence providing a comprehensive oversight of the warlords and bandit republics clashing in central Siberia. The boss gave the papers a long and skeptical scare, skeptical stare before reaching over and carefully flicking through each page. <clears throat> He scoured over each sheet, examining the details of every Bolshevik brigand and opportunist despot rampaging through the key icy regions like animals. Uh, they skirmished with each other for scraps of food and resources in the frozen plains of the west. Finally, the boss came to a page, detailing various strategic and logistical plans for a possible annexation and integration of the region, and his eyes began to glow. His authoritarian ego mal his nourished. McCoskey smirked and tossed the document back on his wooden desk. He leaned back in his chair and reflected upon their proposal, exciting his senses with all kinds of plans to march westwards. This is only the beginning, and it better be, because we got a lot of industry to improve upon here. And I know, like, we're building, I'm building up cities and not millies. I think in the end, we'll probably build a few more millies when we get over here. We'll get a lot more military factories, too, so. I just want a massive industrial base, so we're ready to go. Um, you can do, ooh, 50 is quite a bit, but whatever, that's fine. We're also going to spend our political power on later on anyways, right? And then we'll probably do established close facilities so we can get to this one for better research facilities to societal development. Looks like we're doing quite well. Oh, in the interest of national security, the Vals, upon realizing control over much of eastern Siberia, has returned his attention to the matters of state security. All, after all, in order to have a stable republic, he explains, it must be protected from within and without. Thus, it has been determined that the state intelligence agency is a far greater autonomy from legal restrictions and the authority to conduct operations that will safeguard our nation against subversives and revolutionaries. Doors are kicked down, homes are raided, hundreds are arrested, and traitors are shot in the name of national security. There can be no margin of error. The Vals cannot afford to let this young republic, this great hope of Russia, fall to seditious villainy from the dark corners of the eastern wastes. The Siberian wilderness is unforgiving, and for the crime of treason, Mikoski is too. We will take no chances. And a peace preservation law. While our state moves forward in leaps and bounds, we must not let ourselves become dizzy with success. The right to vote in the wrong place could be disastrous for a newly reformed state, so we must ensure that the votes go to the right men. The peace preservation law will give us the state or give the state the right to veto candidates from the electoral register for the purposes of national safety. The Russian National Labor Party firmly believes in the system of one man one vote. You get one vote and one man to vote for. Oh, I like that. That sounds kind of interesting. And begin the slow process of integration. Next since you're here, you're gonna split you guys into five armies now. There you go, thank you. We will not have as many commanders as we would like, but that is okay. We all have a role here. 
Some more than others. You are done with that. Train the 40s. Wow, that just killed off a lot of our own manpower. Wow, that sucks. Oh well. Do we have any anti-air? I don't think we do. I usually don't make anti-air in TNO campaigns, so... We don't have that many fighters either. Well, great. Qualify votes and districts. The Far East is a vast place, and so the issue of voting districts is a serious one. These districts are powerful to assert control over the sparsely populated land, non-Russian elements like the Saka. Buryats and Mongols have been a thorn in our side for a while, and will no doubt take the chance to cause a fuss when elections reach them, to the same. We must adjust the districts to ensure they remain a minority in these areas. False minorities. Happy 1970, everybody. Hope you're having a great year. <coughs> nice. A fair elections. Uh, these were the three names of the ballots for the Tom's 12 constituency. Two were the candidates of the Russian National Labour Party, who had all the support the party could give them. The t time in the local radio, campaign funds, and the posters with the names that stuck on seemingly every window corner of a Tom's street. <laughs> the Peace Preservation Act had mandated strict ideological requirements for political parties, effectively disqualifying any of the Tomsk salons from running. The other candidate was an independent, former Bastiliad. He entered the elections knowing full well that he was at a disadvantage. None of the old salons could help him. Readers and newspapers refused to give him interviews. He had some discreet money funneled through by old pals in the Bastille Yards, but that it itself was a dangerous proposition. Should the authorities discover them, he would be charged with fraud and squalified from the election. So he did what he did in his Bastille Yard days, standing on street corners trying to insult people enough to pay attention to him. Some days, as he could have he could have a conversation, others, the police should hold him away, naming him a public pest. When the votes were tallied at the end of the day, the result was unsurprising. 95% voted for the RNLP candidates, the rest going to the independents. Without political cause, there could be no political resistance. Ooh, a one-party state. Oh, look at that. More daily compliance goes up by quite a bit. More stability. Nice. Oh, look at this. Integration of the SIP plan. While Puharin's Soviet Union was a disaster for both Russia and the world, there was a silver lining to every cloud. His neglect towards Russia as a whole was balanced by the Siberian plan, a comprehensive redevelopment of Siberian industry, and an upgrade to the Trans-Siberian Railway, connecting the vast underdeveloped lands like never before. <laughs> Well, we've completed... What the heck is this? Our own infrastructure projects we've only recently pushed far west enough to truly reintegrate ourselves with this new network. Why did this fire again? Uh, I don't understand why this fired again. This literally makes no sense. You know what? I guess I'm going to have to go back and, uh... <sighs> Readjust this. Why? I don't understand. Voter rolls. When his village announced the new voting rolls for his district, Art Asyan was excited. Perhaps the boss of the Russians would not be the leader of the Russians alone. Yet he, with the rest of the Saka people, lived there, found their names absent from the board. Asyan's eyes looked over at the A section over and over again, and sure, sure that there was a mistake, it was blank as if the local officials had skipped over him. So this day he came to his office of the Electoral Commission seeking to complain. Asyan was rightfully a citizen of the state, and he would not see his votes his rights violated. Instead, the log belt wooden building was a burly man who tended a thin a uh, slab of plank for a table. <clears throat> Two guards, armed with rifles and pistols, stood in the opposite corners of the room. A door was at the back, leading further into the innards of the office. Approaching the man, Asyan said, I'm, Sir, I'm sorry for interrupting your work, but my name is not on the vo official voting roll. The man smirked. Are you uh, you could? He said. Asyan nodded. My, my. He barked at the guard in Russian, who went on to the backs of the office and summoned a paper form, composed of five or six sheets. Fill this form to the test. I would decide if you can vote. Asian, uh, or Asian spoke Russian, but not this kind of Russian. Scientific nomenclature. Technical terms, so many things he could not understand. The form was a literacy test, he realized. A way to cheat the Saka people from the right to vote. Still, he filled the, fo filled the form with every ounce of knowledge in his mind and handed it to the man. An affected disappointment. I'm sorry, but you cannot. Perhaps once you've studied a bit more, you would be able to do so. However, as it stands, I can see nothing good coming out of you voting. A smile. No offense. Asians left the office fuming, but also frustrated. The party needs competent voters. Now, I didn't do everything in, uh, in order. I didn't do a peace per a uh, law, preservation law, a peace preservation law, but we were still doing this one, doing this one as well, I didn't even do it into the time of cage, and as you can see, we're still beating the crap out of the Kazakh National Republic, which is, it is what it is, uh, let's grab some more tanks, because we're going to be running out of tanks soon, and by soon, I mean, like, we want to get 40 combat with tank divisions, and then I want to throw on some divisions that have SP artillery as well, so, yeah, we're going to need a lot of tanks, we're going to need a pretty big industry, just massive, just gargantuan, so, Apologies for going back in time, but yeah, I don't understand why the second West Russian war mod just seems to be glitching out all the time now. So, oh, and we got them. Not too bad. Status report. If you want to read that one, please go right ahead, of course. Cool, cool, cool. This is only the beginning. 
And of course, like I had to sit up before we left off off screen, we'll go like boom, bong, boom, right that. And the law of consciousness, because I don't get that political power as well, so. Cool. And since we're here, go and core like th four of these places. So now we're getting 0.65 political power every single day. Not much, but it is what it is. Law of consciousness. And we already read about this one, so if you want to read this one, please go right ahead once again. GDP and GDP growth uh, grow slightly. The Piazza Fonta massacre. Things happen. And these are all 40 combo with, so. Nice. Very good. So now, we've got some time to train. This is a very good thing. Consciousness of law. And we're getting the Sib plan. Oh, wow. Rikoski. Still looking pretty handsome. In the interest of national security. Um, yeah, if you want to read this one again, please go ahead. Nice. Politically conscious, politically connect uh, convenient. Our efforts to, to perfect democracy has evidently paid off. The voting turnout has been impressively high in almost every district, with areas of low voting correspondingly closely to areas with large non-Russian populations. The Russian National Labor Party has obtained an overwhelming majority in every district, due largely to there being no other available candidates. Thus, Mikhail Mikovsky has praised the Russian people for their newfound appreciation of democracy, and graciously accepted the mandate they have given him to continue as ten his tenure as leader. Ah. Why would you want to vote for anybody else? That's my question. No partisanship, no problems! The Siberian National Republic has become a peaceful place with the institution of rational democracy. With no opposition to disturb the peace, there is no means for troublemakers to spread their destructive tendencies. The sole means to electoral success is through the Russian National Labor Party, ensuring that anyone desiring votes must have their political views moderated by its cooling influence or find themselves struck from the ballot. Absolutely. And it feels like we did this earlier. Get some of that. Good, good, good. A reliable partner, with us or against us. Hmm. Strengthened by democ strength and diplomacy. Sensible concessions. Oh, that's not bad. Concessions from the VOD. We'll go back into the Atomic Age pretty much immediately. Nice. Another state division is very nice to have. Uh, I could cut it down by like maybe one, two, perhaps. Uh, we have slightly more manpower as well. We could increase relations again, but we're kind of okay for now. Keep putting us up, and we'll, we'll build up some more civvies soon as well. Um. That seems okay. We need way more arty now. Get some more of that, too. Tank-wise, we're at 20 there. We need quite a few more guns, which sucks, but whatever. So we're done with that stuff. Land auction, of course, now is done, which is awesome. Now grab some of that, too. Grab the Into the Atomic Age, which would be good, 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 good. And we begin Kokshitao. But keeping up appearances. Maintaining cordial relations with the OFN has been one of the central parts of our strategy. Whilst once we were but a, many warlords begging for their attention, now we hold dominance over one of the largest countries on the planet and we cannot be ignored. Well, that we may want to be recognized as a sole legitimate Russian government, we must dedicate funds to establishing embassies in the nations of the OFN. The Americans will find it impossible not to give us their vote of confidence, considering the other powers in Russia. Volunteer work. After the primaries, Aloysia spent his days milling about the town of Amur, doing odd jobs and nothing in particular. It's been a fortune to enter the Russian National Labor Party, only to be defeated in the primaries. Aloysia's politics were liberal. He had hoped to join the RNLP with the express purpose of reforming it from within now. Bereft of money and opportunities, his days went by too slowly but also too quickly, like candles. It didn't take long for the SIA to find Aloysia. He was not a discreet man, and his behavior attracted attention, just as he entered the bar to drink. His words away, two men, one thin and one tall. One stocky, one beefy, tapped him on the shoulder. Mr. Aloysia? They said, could you please come with us? We are from the party. We need to talk. At first, Aloysia was hopeful. Maybe the boss saw potential in him as the first politician and sent these two men to give him a second chance. However, his flights of fancy were brought down by the weight of gravity when he realized that these two men were probably from the SIA. Talk, taking him to a quiet street corner, they interrogated Aloysia on his faith for the Russian people, before asking him to volunteer in the Dalstroy. His face failed, but he had little choice. Yes, he said yes. If one cannot serve in the political arena, maybe he could serve as a laborer. <sighs> yes. Look at that. Almost 50%. Not high enough for my personal taste, but whatever. 214 factories? I can't wait to take out the other uh, Russian warlords and then save the game, and hopefully we can t take out Germany, but we'll see what happens. A reliable partner. Sure, the Siberian National Republic has its quirks, but it's a deeply unique position. Certainly there's less freedom of speech here than in America, but what country can't say that? Indeed. Ethnic minorities may have a less than desirable position, but that is true of the USA as well. And yes, the Vols may be closer to a dictator than a president, but he's a benevolent dictator, a true Cincinnatus. We may be flawed, but above all, we are reliable. We desire nothing more than to be a good neighbor, and go any lengths to prove that to our American brothers. Yes, yes, yes. And we're done coining stuff for now, which is awesome. So. Oh, look at that, more manpower. And then we'll do a selfish close facilities like we did earlier. Mm 
Go ahead and get all that stuff done. That's nice, 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 nice. Oh, we can build up more civvies? Oh, yes, please. You know what? And we'll build up some millies, too. Why not? Something I don't normally do, but you know what? We're going to need a, like I said, a Gigantamino base. Look at that. 10.9% versus 12%. That's pretty darn decent. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty darn decent. Keep trading if you need it, guys. Oh, or maybe you don't need it. Okay. Our reliable partner. And I just want some straight tank divisions here. Or, actually, this is pretty close. If we duplicate this from here on out, we can throw on one, two, three, four. No. Oh, actually. Three, 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 three. Actually, get rid of two of these and we can go. Eh, that's not too bad, actually. We'll come back to this one. Uh, with, us or, with us or against us, do that one first. Um, with us or against us. Sensible concessions. This makes more sense. We get better GDP growth. But they already rejected us, so I don't want to do sensible con con concessions. Like, Mexico and Canada are amazing. America sucks. Uh, I'm going to go with this or against us. While we want nothing more to be a good neighbor to establish a good working relationship with our allies, we will not be pushed around. Uh, we aren't some petty warlords say anymore, but a true nation with vast resources. Uh, a mighty army and national pride. While we may work with foreigners, we certainly do not rely on them, and we are far more than willing to walk away from the negotiating table if we are to be fleeced. So we better learn to work with us. So, as much as I want to do this one, um, they, they reject us. They wholly reject us. No matter how well we did with them, they completely rejected us, and I don't like getting rejected. <laughs> then again, I don't think anyone likes getting rejected. So, uh, yeah. That, that's my spiel. There you go. <laughs> cool. We need more guns, too. Anti-tank. Protecting corporate interests. Business is like the lifeblood of the state, and we must do all we can to ensure our business goes smoothly. The vast lands of Siberia and the Far East are painfully underexploited due to the vast size of small populations, so we must do all we can to smooth the bit path towards profits. The easier it is to do business here, the more businessmen we will attract, and the more businesses that become embedded here, the further we integrate ourselves with the OFM. To attract businesses, we must ensure that the rights of the people do not come before their own interests. With us or against us? An army to be proud of. Our army has come far. Once we were little more than gangsters and forcing our will into the streets of Habim. Then paramilitary thugs doing the same in Magadan. We've had to adapt to survive, first innovating in the small unit tactics that allowed us to take down towns and villages, then being forced to develop our own division level strategies when conflict arose with Vajieski's dogs. Unity in the east was only the beginning, though, for when we marched west, we had to adapt to a full scale war on the massive front. In but a single decade, we have developed an army that almost on par with that of the west. All it takes is a bit of polishing before we're ready for the final reclamation. And the final final reclamation. The struggle for the National Russia. The way has been long and hard, but after all this time, the Vals has solidified his grip on the National Republic. From a dream in the slums of Habin to the reality of one of the largest nations on Earth, we are only a step away from the total reunification of Russia, from undoing the last 20 years of humiliation. All that remains is to prepare ourselves for the final struggle. Yes. Yes, yes. Nice. Are we doing any better on uh, stuff here? Nice. Keep getting more political power because we're going to need to decor a lot of things here, man. Anti tanks really bad. Artillery is super bad. Infantry equipment is super bad as well. Holy smokes. Rangers lead the way and halt. The ranks of the Siberian Rangers stopped their march, and a great crash echoed throughout the encampment as the soldiers stamped their boots. They stood in regimented columns, upright in rows, and awaiting Captain Oleg's next command. These were the new recruits, and they had been undergoing vicious training in the wilderness of Siberia to acc acclimatize them to the eastern chill. Training was harsh, and the officers harsh, but such strict order could carve these men into warriors worthy of the Vals' command. Resisting the harsh Siberian cold, they stood as still as Captain Oleg walked past and examined each recruit. He looked each one in the men in the eye and the study of their posture. His gaze was piercing and intimidating, his very stare disciplining any sense of disloyalty in the young men's hearts. Captain Oleg reached the end of the column, to which he raised his hand for a moment, and the recruits lifted their rifles to, to their side in synchrony. With his back turned to the recruits, the collective clatter of rifles reminded Captain Oleg of his early days in the military, and he gazed back at the men to notice they were far more skilled than he was. He smiled beneath his bushy uh, mustache and chuckled for a moment, before returning to his cold and unforgiving gaze. Nice. Cool. And since we're here, oh, might as well grab some of that stuff too. Um, honestly, let's keep going with this stuff because we we already had this stuff in the field. We might as well get that stuff going. Oh, struggle for national Russia. It's completed. A little disappointed that there's nothing else here about that. But and it's time for an oil crisis. Not a problem though. Not a problem. Because so in '71, oh, we'll be able to go to war. But grim tidings. <laughs> Lukowski sat in his office. 
drinking wine. Finally, after all these years, a vintage worthy worth its legacy. Warm, sweet, it made Mikoski tipsy and slightly drunk. The gramophone from Hobbin sat in the corner of the room, blurring nostalgic songs, patriotic marches, anthems, Tchaikovsky. The sweet tunes and mel melodies of his youth brought back memories of him as a teenage boy in the Paris of the East. Finally, all that suffering, all that pain was, of course, worth it. A knock on the door. A disturbance to the rhythm. His doctor came through the door, lathered in an icy sweat. His glasses seemed to tremble as he walked forward, his eyes averted from Mikoski's face. Sir, he said, stammering, fear apparent in the crushing of his teeth. I, I bring you bad news. Leaning back on his grandiose chair, Mikoski spoke. What kind of bad news, doctor? Can't you see the vase is having a good time? Can't it wait? Surely you do not dare risk my wrath. No, sir, I absolutely cannot. It absolutely cannot. Swallowing will continue. I am afraid you are afflicted with cancer, sir. For a moment, McCuskey sat still. He cannot believe what he had just traveled through the doctor's lips. Cancer? Him? At the peak of his life? At this very moment? Lies. All lies. He stood up calmly. Wine glass in hand. McCuskey jerked his arm back and forth again, catapulting the glass into the doctor's suit, splattering him in red. He wanted to shout to scream, but he had to be calm. Guards, guards, take this man away from me. Boots jump out into the room. Volunteer him for a Delstory work. Make sure he's thir 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 thoroughly educated. Understood? Nod. Dismissed. They carried the doctor out and saw being trailed after the departure. There's nothing wrong with the boss. Nothing at all. I thought at that point he was supposed to change his uh, appearance. His portrait. Yeah, but once we can, we're going to just sweep west as best as we possibly can with a lot of infantry. Um, I do want to convert these guys over too. So here, we're going to convert these... Uh, there you go. With SP Art. So I want to finish this side up first. To make sure we get more tanks. Honestly, you're done. Um, do we have tanks to spare? There you go. Let time go on. Uh, you guys. You're not exactly 40 combats yet, but I don't care. Now are we out of tanks? No. We actually have a few tanks here. Huh. Trucks are probably good, right? Motorized is more than fine. Guns are god off. Victory no mon, huh? Yeah, I'll probably get buy some guns. Whatever can help us. Oh, we need to improve our relations too. But since we're done with our focus, not really done with the focus tree just yet, we're getting closer and closer and closer. But eventually, it'll come a time where we can just go ahead and pop through some stuff. Boom, boom. Nice. Uh, artillery's just really got awful. Yeah, that's really bad. Anti tank is pretty bad too. Uh, planes are looking okay, ish. Guns are looking god awful. Holy cow. Wow, that's pretty bad. Yeah, it is what it is. Almost nine billion. And oh, we do keep spending more money, but still. Keep trading if you need to. You guys as well. These are only twenty combo with. I'm if we had more army XP, I'd make these guys forty combo with, but obviously we don't. And we don't need that one, so. I'll probably increase relations again, maybe. So we'll see. Yeah. I just wanna go to war, man. I wish we didn't have to wait. I wish the second West Russian war mod would actually work uh, properly. And is it Hans Spidel here? Yeah, Hans. Oh no, Shona, Shona, Shona's here. Shona, Shona, Shona. I don't want to lose any more political power. There you go. Now we're very high. We're all very high here. All blowing stuff. Anyways. Nice. Get some more uh, industri industry. So I'll be honest here. Um, I did say I would want to do Petland's path or the more reformers path. I'm not sure if we'll actually go this. Well, this far, I don't know if we'll actually reunify Russia under him, just because at the time of this recording, there's no content, so I would at least like to do the reform stuff, and get to, like, the final focus tree for Petland, just to see what it's like, so, I'll probably skip around a bunch, because, I mean, we've already done all the wars, maybe we'll see what happens, I don't want this campaign to be too long, but still, mm, not bad, I don't think we'll get this stuff done, we might get better poverty, we're still 50 to 80%, that's pretty bad, honestly, that's still pretty darn bad, but we have army professionalism, well, I mean, we're on political interference, which is not terrible, uh, innovative industry, which is really good. Modern industrial equipment is pretty good as well, so... Like, overall, it's not too bad. And time to lose more material, because why not? Happy October, everybody! Yeah, was, yeah. When I did Nova Sobirsk, and they and play as Vasily Shutskin... Vasily Shutskin. Yeah, we had a... We had a lot of, uh... A lot more industry. <laughs> yeah, the Sib plan is super strong. And just finished my coffee too, which sucks. But, uh, become a spy master, we don't have a faction. West Russian Revolutionary Front, huh? And it's always good to rinse your mouth out with water. Always good to do that. Better jet fighters because you can. 
So, who are, who's this? Karelian, a Karelian autonomy? Wait, what? What happened here? Wait, why does... I've never seen that happen before. Sakari Similius? Oh, you're a puppet of... Fin that is very weird to see. Um, Zukov, you have a lot of manpower and 50 divisions. You have no manpower and like 52 divisions. Yeah, we'll probably fight the WRRF. Unless we can move in fast enough and just stomp them all. Which hopefully we can. Perks American trust improved relations? No. Um, it is November, so we gotta get ready to reunify the motherland. Um, yeah. There's not really much we can do about that. Oh, yes, this would be good. Do that group. Hopefully we can go to war with Germany still. Nice. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Tanks, uh, not tanks, but infantry crew is looking better. Tanks are doing okay-ish. I don't care about IVs. And there goes any manpower that we had. Happy December, everybody. Happy, happy December. Get some jets. Electronics. Uh, we could always use more industry. And now we're going to save our political power up next. Good. Because we need a lot of stuff to core stuff. We got a lot of stability. A lot of war support. Poverty. Yeah, once we get done it here, this would be a lot better. A lot more income rate factor. More taxable population. Better research speed. Better Worse monthly population. Slightly better construction speed. More output. Better recruitable population factor, barely. A little more war support, a little more stability. You know, when people are not living in poverty, they're a little more stable. Hmm. Must be a nice feeling. Oh! Boris Yeltsin's here! Huh. I didn't know it was Boris Yeltsin. My bad. Boris, my boy. Boris. And here we go. Prepare for the Unification War. Thank goodness. You're Katzenberg, huh? A grand showdown. The WRF is not going to be easy to beat. We can already tell that, but... Cass. More Cass. Because we need a lot of plans to take out the Germans. Advanced development stage? Yes, please. Yeah, we got the political power port. How much do we get every day? 0. 0.9. That kind of sucks. WRF is going to be a pain in the butt to fight. We can already tell. Actually, I should get better tanks too, as well. Um, yeah, keep building yourselves up. But get some more millies first. Quite a few more millies. Because once we take out all the rest of Russia, we'll have more uh, space to build anyway, so I'm not really too worried about it. Good. Good. Get the one too. Nice. Nice. Good stuff. Boris Yeltsin, don't lose too fast. We gotta make sure that you guys are okay. Is it because they're not winning? Is because the WRF does not have equipment, or what? Eh. They're not looking too bad. This might be a little bit of a struggle against these guys. These guys are looking really bad. Holy cow. Cool. Oh, are you all training here? What is... Yeah, get out of there, dude. Yeah, exercise, that's fine, but... Jesus, that's so bad. Tanks? Even more tanks? Yes, please. Yeah, we got plenty of tanks, but we're not going to have enough, because I'm going to throw on a lot of tanks for what we have here. Still 19 there. Planes are okay-ish. Uh, go to 2, maybe there. Go get get, get the, You got to get that many. Yeah. Cool. Keep, keep boosting it up. Keep boosting, 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 boosting. Alright. Uh, get some better planes as well. Oops. Forgot about that one too. My bad. Mm, jets, tanks, stuff like that. Uh, we still have very high relations. I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah, that's not bad to get done. What are you missing here? Probably rubber. Yeah. We got two things of rubber. How about our plane construction? And since we're going to attack them anyways, I'd prefer to do that there. This makes more sense. Nice. And I'll grab some of that too. This is efficiency gain. Might as well. Don't really need that too much right now, but whatever. And tanks, jets. Honestly, I want to sweep westward. Preparedness is greater than 75, so we got to wait for at least one of these to be done. When removed. We'll still get this anyways. We'll lose some more support, but I don't care. Good, Artie. We don't need guns. 
Um, electronics? Eh, I said we'd save political power, but whatever. Cool. Yeah, they're definitely going to win there. Hopefully they can't court that fast, so we can just sweep in. Are y'all all good to go? I don't think so yet. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's good. We're going to need quite a stockpile. We're doing better here. We're doing better here. Oh, and they died. God dang it. Come on, let us go. God, it takes so long just to go to war with these pieces of garbage. Shaw of Iran assassinated. You know, happens. I'll go right there and throw you guys right there as well. Cold days, worrying. Don't really care though. We're gonna go in immediately. Come on. Come on. It's already April. Let's go. Let's go. We don't have time to spare. We gotta go in. Yeah, even though I don't think we'll be actually be able to, huh? Yep, there goes Iran. Goodbye, Iran. So that will be closed out. Tanks, jets. A lot of political power. And they courted all this authority. God dang it. Oh, tons of manpower. Way more than us. So if that's the case, let's do this. Oopsie. I got rid of it all. That didn't help us at all. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah, whatever. Oh, wait, now... What the heck? It popped up? Oh, maybe I just collapsed this. Yeah, I must have collapsed it. It's alright. It's fine. Whatever. How many divisions do we have? 98. That's pretty good. Especially if they're all... All, uh... 40 combo with. Mm. There you go. Did we? Hey! If you're anybody to decrease the party, the toast of economists, please go ahead. Yay! How much did it help out? Ah, that's not bad. That's, that's not too bad, actually. Are we winning here or are we losing? Oh no, we've already killed 65,000 of them. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I like the initial burst. You guys need to move up more quickly than that. Save her peepee, -pee, save her peepee. -pee. Hey, look at that, encirclement. Well, actually you all hold. You are going to go in there anyways. Um, they've lost a good amount of manpower. We've lost some manpower too, but you know, whatever. <clears throat> so far, so good. So far, so good. You guys still have orders? You know where to go? You guys are doing quite well over here. We're getting more army XP, which is awesome, 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 awesome. Now this is a tank division worthy of being called a tank division. Nice. Because these guys, uh, you need SP artillery. Because when we fight America, not America, we're not going to fight America in this campaign. Germany. Like, I want to just smack the little g gobble stackers out of them. I don't know what gobble snack stackers snackers are, but it sounds like something German. Nice. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Alright, so. Cow cheese, what, 50,000 for us, maybe? 30,000 versus 600. Jesus Christ, 600,000? Seriously, bro? That's awesome. Yeah, well, this is this is a lot easier than I thought it would be. Um, I'll be honest, yeah. I thought this would be a lot more difficult for some reason. Because usually the WRF is pretty difficult to beat on occasion, so... Yeah. Of course, we're getting more millies as we take more land away from them, but still. Of course, we need a lot... Oh my gosh, there's going to be so many resources here. Then again, we're going to need the biggest military possible to fight the Germans, so... Keep getting that army XP. We're going to need it. Oh, boy. Good lord, does it... Lord, no, we're going to need it. 
Should be 9, replace that with SPR2. So there we go. Now that's not bad. Oh, we need more precon. Nice. How many visions do I have left? 18? They're about to die. We killed off 800,000, taking about 40,000 casualties. This is probably one of the best times I've ever taken out the Russian Soviet Federative Republic. Probably one of the best times I've ever done this. So, now we've got so many things to core, which kind of sucks, but whatever. And now we're out of PP, and do this too. Rise of the Russian National Republic! Glory to the one true Vazd! The will to power. A winter sonata. Mikovsky stared at the papers before him, holding a side of his stomach. He groaned in pain every time he shifted his weight. The doctor wasn't lying after all. Cancer had come to him, throbbing, pulsating within his belly. A tide of pain that scarcely any painkiller could stem. His new doctor said suggested trips to America. Chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or whatever the hogwash it was these days could help. Not now. The vase of the Russians should rule from the Russian soil, and not delegate his tasks to subordinates while his caveats with foreigners on a strange shores. Mikovsky inclined his head to the window beside him. The snow was falling, layering the frigid air in a cloak of white. Grains of it tossed and turned to the one's hand. Winds hymns and whims, and a hollow rasp whistled it as it brushed against the palace's walls. He closed his eyes and listened, far below in the kitchen. The voices of the maids and servants raised in curious gossip became indistinct whispers punctuated by shrill notes of laughter. Above, the wooden planks of the attic creaked as it moved Mikowski's old positions there. The gramophone, personal mementos, and the stack of Russian marching songs preserved in perfect record. He sat up, the pain was intense, and he gritted his teeth. Swinging his feet to the side, he prepared to stand, one hand on his bedpost. He lifted himself, straining against a mass of shock that seemed to emanate from now nowhere. Yet, he did not scream. Then the boss stood in the opulent bedroom, his knees about to give way under the weight of his agony. Metkoski took a deep breath and started to walk. He could use a drink. Everything begins again. But, hopefully. So, right now, we're done with the campaign, but not really. Oh, man, you were getting old, Mikhail. But, what we're going to do is see if we can actually go to war with the Germans. And here we are at, everyone, December 4th, 1972, in which we can finally go ahead and, of course, do Invade the Reich. Now, I tried to do the whole Russo-Japanese uh, negotiations. It never fired, so I just basically took this area, which we normally get anyways. Cored it, just because we can. Took out Central Asia. we got plenty of manpower, though. So, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, we should do okay here. We really should do relatively A-OK-ish, -okay but you uh, never know. So far looking pretty good, pretty good, uh, yeah, overall not too bad, like, I've been trying to convert some of these guys, I got rid of all the motorized, so now we've got, uh, some 40 combo with, with SP artillery here, so we'll see what happens, hope we can just kneel them, well, pretty easily, Russia declares war in Germany, no turning back now, Hmm. Oh, hello. When did you guys get here? Interesting. Um, anything else here? Really not too much, honestly. Uh, probably need more tanks, but obviously we can't buy that just yet. Uh, casualty wise we delivered 174,000 casualty so far. We've killed quite a few enemies. Obviously not nearly enough, but, you know, whatever. Um, infantry's doing okay. These guys are literally just all 40 cal with infantry divisions, which is fine. The tanks are the ones with a lot of air... Well, we just lost a division there. My bad. <sighs> uh, make sure they can't really move. Don't get encircled. There you go. Yeah, my bad. We lost a division. Oh, well. It's because we don't have enough divisions in general, so... There you go. Cool. Why don't you guys retreat a little bit more? I want you to focus, like, up here. Where is our infantry divisions? What are they doing? Our infantry divisions are not that smart. I guess that's why they're the infantry. Oh, we got Moscow, though. They're behind us. Nice. Get more tanks. Off, off for Western Russia. Keep going. Keep going. See what we can do. Losses. We're at... Eh, still not too bad. Those guys... Scandin Scandinavian. Huh. 
Um, killed quite a few guys so far. Not nearly enough, of course. Oh, peace conference. Oh, nice. Very nice. Oh, that's infantry as well. Nope. We okay. We're okay. Keep going, though. Keep going. The tanks keep on going, too. Gotta beat the Ukrainians. Any upgrades? No? Well, maybe we're we're not, it, is, it is cold here in January of 73, so... Any upgrades for Andre? Uh, we're not as well, because we can. And nothing else. Alright, so be it, so be it, so be it, so be it, so be it. Global training centers. Uh, grab some more stuff here, because you can. There you go. There you go, too. Anything you find, anything you kill, will be fair game. Uh, 370,000 there. The Ionite's back has not lost anybody yet, but... Oh, we'll get there. Oh, I promise you that. Especially once the Ukraine does fall. Oh, boy. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're all dead. Yay! There you go. More infantry divisions. Actually, we're already maxed out, so I don't want any more. Um, yeah. I just want a lot more tanks. Fuel's fine. Fuel's also very weird to be oddly super fine, but whatever. I don't know where these guys are thinking they're going, but whatever. And... These guys died? Who died? Oh, the Moscow Autonomy. Oh, nice. How delicate. You guys got yourselves encircled again. God dang it, stupid tanks. They're too fast sometimes. They're for their own good. There you go, nice. Oh, look at these guys. Completely encircled. Goodbye. Oh. Well, might as well start integrating these guys, right? Nope. Oh my god. Can you please stop just trying to get encircled here? Look at all those guys over there. Wow. Um, I'll, I'm going to call all you guys to take out Caucasia. I think that's what we have to do at this point. We're not at war with Crimea, which is weird to see, but whatever. Keep going in. we got to liberate these guys. Force the attack. Kill them off. Oh, wow. Now they're really attacking us. Wow. Helicopter divisions. Nice. Oh, we got to go here too, huh? Bro, that sucks. You've got to hold out, man. Ah, we lost. God dang it, that sucks. Well, I found the Germans. They found us too. Go into Kiev. Take Kiev. That might just be enough to take these guys out. Oh, we liberated those guys. Good. Well, once we get those guys done, these guys have no more uh, things over there too. No more fuel from the Caucasus, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. So they will run out of fuel eventually. They haven't navally invaded us just yet, either. Ah, Moscow. Yeah, that'd be good. Losses, they are starting to rack up some more casualties. Wow. Awesome, huh? Keep going, guys. You're doing a great job. You're doing a great great job. Hey, if you want to buy army, better army professionals, please go ahead. Excellent. Excellente. Austin's next. So far, not bad. Could be better, though. Could be a smidgen better. Oh, I forgot this stuff, too. I always forgot this stuff. Wow, we're really far behind on this, aren't we? Let's go straight to Baku. And Krasnodar next. There you go. Caucasus are gone. And now we get to fight the German Beast himself. Pretty standstill right now. Wow, they're racking up a lot of casualties. They're really desperately trying to beat us up. They are desperate to beat us up. Uh, go, go there. Still not too bad. Two billion is not bad. Uh, more civvies, maybe? Oh, yeah, look at all that green. I love the green, man. Lots of green is good. Azerbaijan would be great. Are you on the line? Yes, you are. <sighs> Pretty good. Three. Actually, you know what? I don't want to do that. I want you guys to attack. Let the tanks lead. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let it be like a cancer. Spread like Mikowski's cancer. Oh, my gosh. We're just racking up casualties. Holy crap. 600,000 so far? Obviously not enough, but... I'm feeling pretty good about it. Not gonna lie. Just blazing through a warpath, hopefully.
Oh, these guys are in a circle, huh? Yes. And there they go. I need you guys to stop, because you're doing you're being too successful right now. Which is weird to say, but whatever. So now let the let the infantry get to the line. You guys hold for now. And then we'll restart our attacks. 800,000 have died, which is not enough, obviously, but still. Uh, we don't have that much time, since so they will still naval invade us, which sucks, but whatever. Kharkov? Yes. Alright. Infantry should be there by now. Okay, they are being incredibly stupid, and choose not to be. Which is unacceptable, but whatever. Why are you guys going to be down here? And force your way this way. If you can, go. Be fast. Be speedy. In the meantime, I want uh, you two to go here. Don't let him move. Nice. Now. Go in. Kill them off. Look at all this. Good old pocket. Ugh, tasty. Delicious. Yummy. Very good. Oh, they're trying to liberate them. How sad. How sad and pathetic. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, some more guys. Yes, yes. They have to be at least, yeah, 1.3 million. Nice. ADS, Yuri, anything here? No. Nikolai, no, it's fine, whatever. Uh, grab some more of this too, get some more armor. Grab some of this as well. <sighs> Very nice. Three. And this is going to be the big one, hopefully. Two. Georgia, yes. It was like you guys started off, started off, you guys started off. Now, how much more manpower does Germania have? Or Germany? None! Oh, that's beautiful. Equipment wise, they should probably still have a good amount of equipment, I would assume. Yeah, they got some good amount of equipment. But with the amount of manpower, that's pretty good. Three. Two. We got enough manpower to last for a while. Let's go. They're out. We're in. Force the attack. Kill them all off. Move to the Russian capital. Oh, sure. Third Rome? The window of the west. Oh, I don't want to get navally invaded, so the third Rome. Nice. Well, we're back. What's that all? Oh, we actually have that thing done, too. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, that should really help us out, then. I want 200... Uh, well, 2 million casualties, which we already have. Can we get to 3 million? I think 3 million would be great. Three million casualties for the enemies. Only makes sense for us, man. Yeah, they're looking pretty darn bad in a lot of these areas. And we have more than enough fuel to keep it up. We have 135 divisions. We almost we're roughly equal. And now we're equal. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, especially as we continue to integrate places too. 2.7, not bad. They have less than 100 divisions. I love SP artillery. I, I'm a true believer now. I can definitely say I'm a true believer of SP artillery. Holy crap, it's just devastating. I would hate to be on the receiving end of that stuff. 3 million in total now for the other side, but of course, the other, some of the other nations also capitulated to us, so. Poland, we're going to Krakow. Uh, Warsaw is a frontline city. Austin just does not want to give up yet, though. And they are paying dearly for it. Like, their manpower? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, Warsaw's ours. And there goes Austin. Nice. 
Riga will be ours too. Good. Talon. Complete gym and surrender. How far can we push him? Three million is not, not enough. I want more. And how much are we getting? 2.1 a day is not bad. Well, Germany. There's left here. Can't really do too much, can they? No. Oh, we actually go down our debt. I love it. Smolensk. Oh, we take out Slovakia too. Awesome. Ah, only three million dead Germans. And those are Germany Germans, not even Ukrainian collaborators, Belarusians or Oslin groups as well. Königsberg will be ours. <sighs> we only ended with 3.22 million. Darn. Wait, why did they get Oslin back? Ooh. That literally makes no sense to me, but whatever. I'll do that real quick. The world is saved. For now. For now. Um, honestly, this should be ours. Uh, well, let's see. That literally should be ours, so. I'm um, not sure why that fired like that, but whatever. Oh, did you have upgrade? No, you actually didn't have upgrade yet. Okay. Uh, tank should be there. Good. Fit if I broke five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead. We should be easily be able to win. And we got him. A victory for the motherland. So, I think that's going to end us here for this episode. Now, we're going to go back in time, like I said, and check out Petland's path to see if he's any little different. We probably won't take out Germany. It'll probably be a one uh, episode type of deal. But hey, regardless, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new here. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will see what reformism does for the Russian National Republic, or just Russia in general. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.